Hello maths fans! Welcome to another episode of Maths Speed Dating, where I interview fellow YouTubers by asking them randomly selected questions from speed dating websites. Today's victim is none other <laughs> than Simon Clark. Hi! Welcome Simon. Uh, would you like to tell everyone a little bit about your channel and convince them why they should subscribe and go and watch your videos after they finish watching this one. So I'm a, I describe myself as a recovering academic. I, uh, I did my PhD in theoretical atmospheric physics and alongside that started making videos about my research and what I now do is a lot of uh, videos around earth science in general and specifically a lot of atmospheric stuff. But it's a bit all over the place, there's some book stuff, there's some more nerdy things in there. But if you, if you like any of those words then uh, you should check it out. Okay, so do you know what you've let yourself in for? Only vaguely. I have approximate <laughs> and terrifying knowledge. <laughs> okay, so for the benefit of Simon, who clearly doesn't know the rules yet, and uh, potentially anyone watching who hasn't seen one of the maths speed dating episodes before, the way it works is Simon is going to roll this dice, um, which hopefully is a real non-biased dice. I was going to say, you haven't weighted this. <laughs> what is it? One of these is uh, danger. So. Yes, so, so based on the number that you roll, so if you roll a one, we will have the maths questions. So labeled maths. I mean, it should say maths slash YouTube kind of you okay, know, right. general social media style stuff. Um, the two or three would be the general. So these are what I categorized as relatively normal speed dating questions. Like, you know, I've tell never, us about your hobbies. I've never done speed dating. So <laughs> this is going to be uh, an interesting... Things you would ask to get to know a new person. Okay. Gen you know, pretty basic. Like, what's your hobbies? You know, favorite color? Okay, what fine. Else? I, I know like the that. answers to those ones. Uh, a four or a five is the fun. Great. I like so the sound of the fun girl. Because <laughs> obviously everything else isn't fun. Um, they're the ones that are like um, a little bit more interesting than the general ones. That's a bad way of saying it. They're all interesting. They're like, you know, maybe um, if you could be an animal, what would it be? Oh, okay. So, so still reasonably... Reasonably, if I want to get to know someone, I want to yeah, know what animal like they want little... to be. But it's a fun version. Yes, of that. it's a little okay, bit I'm on board. <laughs> more abnormal. Than, sure. But yeah. Um, and then, of course, we've got danger. Uh, danger is far too strong of a word. Don't <laughs> tell me. I don't want to know anything more about what's in this <laughs> okay. jar. I want that to be a total surprise. <laughs> okay. So yeah, danger. Um, I think that's about it, really. So you're going to roll the dice. I'll grab the jar, but you're going to select the question. Okay. Because we want Simon to be responsible for all of his own choices. This has historically this gone very badly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, right. To learn, I must play. Roll four. Okay, so I think that's going to be the fun jar. Okay, great. So great start. Please select a question. That one. All right, what have we got? Do <laughs> Do I have any nicknames? Um, the nickname that my community has given me is Dr. Warhammer Puppy. <laughs> That's the best nickname I've had in this so far. Because, I mean, I have a PhD, which people, I like to mention from time to time. Uh -huh. uh, and I'm a massive nerd, specifically Warhammer nerd, but in a way that's like a puppy's enthusiasm. I'm sort of tripping over my own feet, trying to like, you know, talk to people. Have you heard about Space Marines? Kind of, <laughs> kind of thing. So I, I feel like it's an appropriate nickname for me. But as, I'm sure I have many worse ones than this. They're probably just ones that I'm mercifully unaware of. <laughs> but I like it. Dr. Warhammer. Puffy. puffy yeah okay <laughs> future uh second youtube channel coming soon don't tempt me frodo honestly <laughs> I, I i really really could do that <laughs> all right i think that was a good start all right promising let's go again three okay, so three this is, uh this is gonna be the general dial part, back the it? fun everyone it's not gonna be quite <laughs> as fun anymore uh right so if you select it but i think if i read it then right. perhaps it'll catch you a little bit more off guard there we I go got two there is that one there you go that looks like one all right um, it's alright. What are you currently watching? You. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, uh, what am I watching? I am watching Star Trek Deep Space Nine. I am on okay. season seven. I've been a completionist. I started from the start of The Next Generation, watched mm -hmm. all of that, 170-something episodes, and I've nearly finished Deep Space Nine. Um, so, I'll be honest, I, I've heard of Star Trek and seen a couple of the movies. So, is the idea that the first one you mentioned is like, the first series of it? Or? So the, the original series is the one that was in the 
60s? I think. Okay, I've okay. never actually watched the original series. Right. That's one with like Kirk and Spock and like okay. the famous one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in the 90s, late 80s, early 90s, there was this other, like, um, The Next Generation, which was like the reboot. Well, it wasn't a reboot, it was like the continuation. Yes, uh, and then okay. that went really well, so then they did another series which was set in a different bit of the same universe. And then there's another one which I'm going to watch next, which is uh, Voyager. I see, so you started with, you were like, 60s is too old. Yeah, oh. well, well, because the next generation was what I grew up watching. That was like okay, the thing right. is, my mum is where I get all my sci-fi nerdery from. <laughs> like my mum was a big Star Wars fan. She introduced me to Star Wars and Star Trek and Stargate yeah. and all of these all these things with Star in the title, <laughs> not Warhammer. Um, and then my dad was the fantasy, like Lord of the Rings and that wow, kind of okay, thing. So okay. I had like the two the the dual gods of nerdery. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. I had both sides. There was never a chance. <laughs> uh, but the the next generation was what I watched when I was a kid. So it's now I going see. back instead of watching it piecemeal on like an episode here and there it's actually seeing the whole story which is okay. fun but yeah. then in terms of, like that's that's the tv stuff and then mm. on youtube i mean i've got about 100 videos on my watch later playlist like wow I've, do I've... you actually go back and watch them because i don't i yeah. save them to watch later and then i'll be honest like it's hardly been a ever. real struggle trying to get through them like okay. i've been traveling a lot recently and i think i've averaged like six hours of youtube a day like when I've been on yes. trains and yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that. Okay. Uh, but it's like catching up on. I watch a lot of people like the Oxcast and Hat films, like gaming type stuff. Mm -hmm. But then also, Internet Historian released one recently that I've watched like five times because it's a masterpiece. <laughs> uh, I mean, what else? Like Red Letter Media, I'm a big fan of. Kurtzgesagt is another amazing channel. Yes, like, yes, yes. yes. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a mix. Okay. <laughs> oh, Casey Neistat. Casey Neistat coming back and making more vlogs has been a big event for me recently. Yeah, so. I've been seeing those appearing on my feed actually. Oh, really? And I recognize the name as like, you know, this was the first. Did he, was he like the first person to do the jump cut and make it like the standard YouTube thing? Uh, that was of... arguably Z Frank. Zay Frank, how do you pronounce it? Like, Casey was okay. the one that like kind of brought the vlog to its modern form. I don't Okay. Argue. He right. was the big influence. So I vlogged my, my PhD and yeah. he was the big influence on my style. Okay. Um, okay. So, like, I think everybody should watch him. I think he's a brilliant filmmaker. Mm -hmm. And he took a hiatus for a bit, spent time with his family, whereas now we've got him back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, just before we move on to the next question, you mentioned mom was like sci fi. Yeah. Dad was like fantasy. So when you play Warhammer, do you play. Because oh, there's sort yeah, of there's like. two versions, yeah. Right? There's like the, the spacey, more sci fi. I, I won't pretend to know the name. Warhammer like, 40,000, yeah. Yeah, right? So there's. And that's like. Would you say that's the more sci fi one? That's definitely the sci fi one. And then one. there's the. There's the other one, is just Warhammer Fantasy. Well, well huh, there was a reboot okay, right. quite recently, which <laughs> is. It's not really that controversial anymore, but like the original version was Warhammer Fantasy, and then they killed it off a couple of years ago and they rebooted it as Age of Sigmar. Personally, right. I'm not interested cause in that because it's very like kind of high fantasy and like I preferred the grittier style okay. of the fantasy, original fantasy which I naturally now have a, a fifth edition lizard men army that my friend's given me <laughs> uh, which I'm going to be stripping and repainting so I'm much more on the 40k side of things my, okay. my big project that I've been working on for the past couple of years has been my Hawaiian orcs so they're like sci-fi orcs, but in like Hawaiian shirts and throwing coconuts. <laughs> and stuff like but they're that. not meant to be in Hawaiian shirts, right? No, no, no. Like they're just... meant to be like really. They're meant to be like football hooligans in space. But like, I decided <laughs> that I wanted them to be really chill dudes, and so I have a I have a painting Instagram which is Fifty Shades of Space Wolf Grey. Uh, and if people want to check that out, then you can see see my Hawaiian orcs. <laughs> Amazing, and on that. That Amazing was more book. of a fun yeah. answer. I like, you know, <laughs> I've got hope now. Shall we, shall we roll again? Let's go again. Oh, one. Okay, so finally some maths. You're doing well here. Three from three on different jars. Yeah. Um, so maths slash YouTube, remember. Okay, right. I really should change the label. Is that um, one? There we go. Thank you. Right. I don't know why I'm closing my eyes. It's not like I can see <laughs> the question. It's quite small text. Oh, okay. What is your favourite Millennium problem? This requires oh, you to know gosh. what the Millennium problems are. Now, of one, of the, um, one of them is the non-linearity in the Navia Stokes. One of them is like, yeah, understanding Navia Stokes, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, the yeah. only one that I'm aware of. But to be honest, even if I knew of the others... <laughs> Is one, is one like the Riemann hypothesis? What is the Riemann hypothesis? Right. So this has now just become Can Simon Name the Seven? Okay. <laughs> no, that is it. I'm tapping out. Like, I um, I did a physics degree, not a maths degree, and I remember them mentioning in third year about the uh, Navier Stokes being one of the Millennium problems. Yeah. And being like, oh, maybe I could do that. And then I got half a term and I went, no, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> Even for me as a mathematician, when I read when I read the description of the Navier Stokes problem, mm. as someone who's studied fluid dynamics and that equation, I'm just like, no. This is just so, like, removed from reality and applied maths. It's, yeah. it's more about, like, um, I would sort of say, 
understanding the structure of a partial differential equation. Like, it's like, you know, it's like, let's take a PDE as this, like, abstract object and let's really, like, dig into what does that mean, what's going on. Right. Not like, you know, what's happening here? Why is this relevant to, you know, these applications? Which is um, like, that's what I, as a physicist, I'm all about the applications, you know, yeah, yeah. so uh, the mathematicians have given us a gift, like Dobby, giving Dobby a sock. <laughs> and it's like, oh, we've got this equation. Great. We'll yeah, run yeah. away and use it. And they're like, well, wait, we don't understand it. It's like, yeah. no, no, no. We're using it now. <laughs> I'm off the stairs. I'm running away. <laughs> so yeah, if I had to pick one, it would be that one because that's the one that I had the most uh, experience with using. That okay. Is yeah. Awesome. And you did mention Riemann hypothesis, which of course is one of the others. Um, I'm just going to tell you what yeah, they are Yeah, please now. do. I mean, I'm interested. <laughs> um, there's one called P versus NP. Oh, yeah. I'm aware of this one as well. Yeah. Okay, so computational complexity yeah. and things. Um, there's one to do with quantum fields, the Yang-Mills mass gap hypothesis. Oh, okay. Which is to do with how we mathematically model quantum field theory. Yeah. Um, there's one, the Birch and Swinnerton and Dyer conjecture, super mathematical, looking at things called elliptic equations and whether or not they have solutions. All elliptical forms are modular. That's all I can do. Something remember. to do, yeah, that that kind of vibe, yeah. yes. Um, then we have the Hodge conjecture, which is to do with topology um, and sort of groups and algebra. It's very, very complex. That's the one where any, even any mathematician's like, don't ask me what the Hodge conjecture is. <laughs> and the last one is the one that's solved, which is the Poincaré conjecture. Oh, and you possibly yeah. know the story of the Russian mathematician Gregory Perelman. Yes, solved it and then turned down the prize money. Yeah, and it became like a whole I did it for the maths. I didn't. Yes. I wasn't in it for the money. Yeah, because exactly. I, I think that happened when I was an undergrad. It it would have. Oh, yeah. It was like maybe twenty ten. Yeah. I think he was. He turned down the money. He solved it in like two thousand and four. But it took a few years to verify in different things. Because presumably, and it was like, I mean, my only reference point here is Fermat's Last Theorem. And mm. Andrew, while I was working on this thing, yes, it takes yes, so yes, long yes. to verify what he did because there are so few people who can understand the paper. Yeah, and it's like hundreds of pages long as well. So yeah. even if you understand it, it takes you like... And it's like checking every single step. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, no yeah, wonder. Yeah. But, oh, okay, right. I, I was aware of more than I thought. Yeah, okay, I, thought, cool. I thought you might have been. That's why I was like, can you name any more? <laughs> no, 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 still, stand by that answer. <laughs> Okay, can you get four from four and Here get danger pot? You're growing, I mean, this is my Warhammer skill coming out now. If anyone has played Warhammer <laughs> against me, they know I'm incapable of rolling a six. See? Uh, that was two. two. Uh, it's going to be general again. Okay. Uh, let's go. I've just stopped closing my eyes. Here we go. Uh, that one. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. What are your favourite places you've visited? Oh, okay. Um... So just a couple. My fav my happy place is probably uh, Jersey, the island of Jersey. Okay. So I used to go there when it, uh, for holidays when I was a kid. Yeah, and yeah. on the island, there's a conservation charity called Durrell. Uh, I filmed with them a couple of times, but they're basically all about uh, stopping endangered species from going extinct by building up a stable breeding population. Mm -hmm. So they've got, for example, like 10% of all of the world's Livingston's fruit bats. Wow, in Jersey. Uh, in Jersey, because wow, the, okay. where they where they live uh, in the Comoros is it's the kind of situation where if a single hurricane hits the island from the wrong angle, you could lose the species. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's this amazing place. It's full of these beautiful animals. Uh, but the island itself is is just gorgeous. It's like France without having to speak French. So it's just great. <laughs> it's like without French people. Uh, so it's the best. Sorry, French people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so there for sure. Uh, where else have I been? Vienna. So um, mm. the EGU, which is the European Geosciences Union, yes. um, is like the big conference in my area. Uh, it's always in Vienna, and it's just a really cool city. Really, yeah. really like Vienna. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other place that the big conference takes place in is San Francisco, which is the AGU, the, uh, which is the American, I think, geo physical union they have two slightly okay, different names right, yeah, yeah. Uh, but but san francisco was very very cool um it did somebody said to me when i was there that everyone's a ceo here <laughs> which like <laughs> they're the only the ones vibe. who can afford to live there basically yeah, right like all, the all they're self-appointed it's like i have my own company yeah. kind of, kind of <laughs> um but which, which was cool but the i think the, actually the area around san fran like i, I did a trip up into yosemite and that mm, was yes beautiful yes um so that that was definitely i'd, I'd love to go back there i don't one more maybe uh, Sky actually so the I have relatives who live in the Isle of Sky in Scotland yeah. uh, and I visited there again as a kid uh, and it's just the most beautiful rugged landscape and yeah. it, I think it's one of the reasons why I went into earth science and sort of atmospheric physics because I grew up loving science and loving physics but also being a very outdoorsy kind of person. Right. So, like, I was a scout. I used to love going on hikes and going out in the mountains and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of landscape really lends itself to looking at 
what, how does this work? You're watching clouds flow over these mount, these mountains and thinking, what's causing that to happen? Yeah. And I guess that's where I, why I ended up where I am now. <laughs> but yeah, beautiful place. If you ever get a chance to visit, the sky's beautiful. Yeah, I'd, I'd been to the other three you mentioned. But oh, really? I'd, I'd been to Jersey, I agree, is awesome. San Fran is awesome. Vienna's awesome. I've never been to Sky, but it looks awesome. So. Yeah, definitely worth a visit. <laughs> and rugged is the word, that would be the word I had in my head yeah. for anything up around that part well, of Scotland. They like, filmed a bit, bits of Game of Thrones up there, mm, like for the yeah, wilderness yeah, yeah. bits, and it yeah. is, it's all like that, yeah. really. Awesome. <laughs> right, it's hoping for a six. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Hey! I can do it. <laughs> never has someone been so happy to get the danger, danger part until Welcome you do the question. to the danger zone. <laughs> Right. Oh, this is a big one. Okay, let's give you that one. It's it's interesting. I'm just mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. I know how I'm just trying to make you nervous by stalling, but I also know how bad some of these are. <laughs> this is okay. If you could commit one crime without being caught, what would it be? This is. Oh God, there's so many answers. Live for YouTube. <laughs> uh oh, bloody hell. Uh, <laughs> That's a really hard question because part of me just wants to say eat the rich. Um, <laughs> what? Cannibalism. Yeah, cannibal, but it's, it's, it's more the rich part than the eating yeah, part. Yeah. That'll be the, the relevant bit. Uh, blimey, what would I want to do? It's I'm such a law-abiding citizen is the problem. Mm. I'm I'm very much I was a Boy Scout for goodness sake. Right. So obviously <laughs> I'm the laws. Um, you could like Robin Hood. Oh yeah, well, Absolutely. I mean, if that's... you know, just kind of based on what you said about eat the rich, you could yeah. do like a Robin Hood. Type. I don't have to eat them, I suppose. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to. Um, yeah, I suppose like I, as anyone who follows me on Twitter will know, I, I definitely am not right wing in my politics. Mm-hmm. I, I am very much of the belief that too much wealth is hoarded by modern day dragons. Mm-hmm. So I guess some level of don't have to eat them, but some <laughs> some kind of stealing, <laughs> stealing from these vaults of people and redistributing to people who actually. I'm not going to say deserve it, but but people who just don't have enough, you yeah. know, uh, mm-hmm. and something's got to give. And if I can be the little pebble that's, that <laughs> sends the boulder crashing down the mountainside, sure, I'll, I'll take that as a crime. <laughs> there we go. I'm glad we moved away from cannibalism to modern day Robin Hood. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I'm vegan, so I've got, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know, unless they're plant rich, like, I don't even know how it would work. <laughs> there we go. Well, all the jars are open now, all yes. of these... Canoptic seals have been Everything's on the table. broken. So, oh, off the table. Oh! Straight away. Another danger one. Can't get enough. There aren't that many of them, so yeah. <laughs> don't roll too many sixes. <laughs> Again, play Warhammer with me one day. <laughs> You'll know that's not going to happen. <laughs> what was the biggest trouble you got into at school? Okay, I, uh, I never had a detention in school. Oh, wow. Okay. I was, again, I was too much of a goody yeah. two shoes. Um, the biggest trouble I got. Can I count university in this? Yeah, well, I'll allow it. So I'll allow it. There's this funny story that happened with my YouTube channel. So I started out doing videos about applying to Oxbridge. So I went to a state school, mm-hmm. and uh, the reason I started making videos was because I wanted people who went to state comps like me to have answers to, like, what are the interviews like? What kind of questions do you get? And um, I did two videos going through my interviews, and these were the questions I got. This is how I answered them. Mm-hmm. This is how I did. Um, and I interviewed at Jesus College, and I ended up at St. Peter's College. And about in second year, uh, which was the first year of admissions after I'd made those videos, yes, G- the tutors at Jesus College got in touch with me to say, you've got to take this video down, because w- we ask the same questions every year. Uh, you yeah. know, you can't do this. <laughs> and to his credit, Chris put my tutor at St. Peter's was like, no. You know, write new questions because yeah. there are, there are so many people that go back to their school and tell um, everyone, tell everyone like, else yeah, what yeah, they got. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was quite a thing to have this quite formal email mm. to be like, "You, oh, this is outrageous! You can't do this! You've ruined the admissions process." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, "This is the first time." Were, I feel were like you I'm... a little bit terrified when you received it? Like, I, yeah, I, like, I can imagine. It, yeah, I, like... I'm someone who definitely suffers from imposter syndrome as mm. well. Like, I mean, I I have it so bad that during my PhD, I got imposter syndrome about having imposter syndrome. I was like, "You're not." A <laughs> enough to even feel this way uh, so when yeah. I was at Oxford I really had it and I was like um, oh you know I'm, maybe they'll kick me out um, so yeah I really felt like mm. I'd crossed a, a, a line and I was in trouble <laughs> which for well, the first time <laughs> I'm glad your chiefs are actually sort of yeah, to, yeah so, credit. so I, I now do the admissions at Salemon Hall where we are at the moment and um, yeah so I am aware I, I thought most admissions tutors were aware mm. that 
when you use a set of questions, the students, the candidates, are quite obviously going to go and tell their friends. So there's an advantage school, if you go home from a school like Eton or Westminster or lots of other places. Yeah, where a school a history. That's, yeah, a school that sends students or candidates every year. They're going to know. Because, you know, the teachers will ask them, oh, what did you get asked at your interview? And then sort of actually be noting you that down. You have a down. library of it, yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I just assumed that anyone in, you know, doing admissions in my position was aware of that. So, like, I change my questions every year. Yeah, well, I think, um, which I think is exactly the right thing to yeah. do. So, got in trouble, but for the right reasons, <laughs> I think. Yes. <laughs> no, that's a good one. That's a good one. Okay, I'm now worried about the danger jar. This is like, <laughs> I've got a glimpse of what, what could be in here. Okay, one, the opposite end. We've got some maths again. <laughs> Thank you. What is your favourite number? Ooh. <laughs> mm. you, see, most people change their favourite, at least most mathematicians. This answer changes every time you're asked the question, because it's whatever number pops into your head you can say something interesting about. Yeah, but I mean, I, I, I don't have any, like, fancy mathematical justification for That's it. That's fine. I like... Oh, God, I, I, I changed my answer on as soon as I was about to voice it. There are so, the numbers are great. Like, I think... if we, Maybe we should do a tier list of numbers. Okay, tier list of numbers. But, like, you know, that, that would be its own separate thing. Like, zero is amazing, but I have, like, weird feelings about zero. It makes me feel a little uncomfortable. Mm, Whereas yeah. one, solid. You know we are of one. Two is a building block, and I really like... Three is a weird as I will accept. Three is, like, really towards the top of the tier list, because okay. it's odd... But, like, it's friendly odd yeah, in, in yeah, a way yeah, that I can yeah. get behind. And, and th rule of three, it's a thing in filmmaking and everything like that. Four and five are probably my favourites because they're building block numbers. Mm -hmm. Especially five. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know where you are with a five. And similarly for four. Whereas, like, six, seven in particular can get in the bin. Yeah. <laughs> seven is a weird number. That's why people tend to like it. So there is like a thing behind the, the psychology of picking favourite numbers and people tend to pick uh, prime numbers and ones that are like a little bit weird. So like 7, 11, 17, yeah. maybe 19. Like definitely primes and definitely like things that are difficult to manipulate, like yeah. you say. I'm sorry that I haven't said like the taxi cab number or anything. No, really, you don't need to you know. have a cool mathematical <laughs> reason. Like, But like, yeah, there's something about seven that makes me feel slightly uncomfortable. Okay. But it, it's also a meme in my Discord that like, because it was on this thing on Twitch where if you put seven in a text-to-speech donation, it would slow down the donation. So if okay. people would put loads of sevens after each other, like seven, seven, yeah. seven, 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 <laughs> it would speed up at the end. So for that reason, it's kind of burned into my brain. Right. Um, also, a funny thing happened yesterday, two days ago, sorry, with eight so mm -hmm. you know when you go to a restaurant and they give you uh, like a, a number thing this is your order yeah. and if it's like a nine they'll put a line to say this is nine not six yes we sat down and were given an order number with an eight but the eight had a line underneath it <laughs> <laughs> to clarify which way up heaven we... forbid we put that eight upside down you know what well, we, we did do we put it upside yeah. down we were like we've got eight bar we got the average of eight <laughs> did you ask for clarification or just no we, we, we as soon as he turned up with the food I was like I don't feel like we're going to get anything out of this <laughs> discussion <laughs> so I felt a bit bad <laughs> but uh yeah f if I have to pick one five I like five okay all right well now you have to roll a five yeah come on <laughs> if this is the fate of the universe if I do oh no ah. <laughs> We're back on danger. <laughs> back on danger. We're going to get rid of through all of these. I think you are, yeah, that's right. It just complains ooh, about inability ooh, to roll ooh, dice ooh. and then suddenly gets all of these sixes. Honesty or sparing someone's feelings? Mm, uh, that's a... For sakes, I'm a scientist, not a humanities student. Um... <laughs> Um, That's why it's in the danger part. It's it's not one that you necessarily want to think about or answer, right? No, I mean, my gut instinct is always to be honest because I feel like if you are dishonest to preserve someone's feelings in the present, it only makes things worse down the line. That's true. And I would always rather people be honest with me and so... I, I would like to do the same for them. However, I am a terribly socially awkward person and I don't do very well with small talk. So the number of times when it's easier just to just do this thing. But if it's a person that I care about and I know mm. I'm going to talk to in the future, then definitely honesty. Like, I yeah. think in any relationship, I mean, romantic relationships particularly, but also mm -hmm. platonic relationships, like honesty is like the fundamental thing. Yeah. So I, I feel like it's a strong honesty from me. Yeah. No, I think that's fair. I think you... Because I was thinking about this myself, I think you've nailed it actually. Like, if it's someone 
that you have a close relationship, whether it's friendship or, you know, romantic, as you say, like, I feel like honesty, if it's someone just small talk, you'll probably never see again. Sometimes it's easier to just go along with whatever. And, yeah. I yeah. Just, you see someone in a play, it's like, you were fantastic. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Glad we're in agreement on that one. Right, so roll again. Go for it. Oh, for God's sake. Has <laughs> <laughs> this thing waited? It's, it's the fact that What's you said... What's the probability distribution function on this? <laughs> it's the fact that you said I can never roll a six. It's, yeah. It's like, can we get new dice, please? <laughs> Goodness sakes. We are going to run out of danger questions. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, this is all right. What is the most adventurous thing you have ever done? Ooh. Um, I'm not sure that's danger, but, you know. Interesting. I think define adventure, yeah. I guess. I suppose, in a sense, the most adventurous thing I did was try to go full-time on YouTube. Like, yeah. I took yeah, a real... Yeah, yeah. like. How did that happen? Thing. I wanted... So... As, as someone who currently does YouTube, but not full-time. Yeah. Okay, when did you reach a point? I'm very intrigued by this. When did, And I'm sure the viewers are. What point did you reach as someone making content on YouTube where you were like, I can probably yeah. potentially do this full-time? Like, how did that happen for you? So I... in I, I've been making videos throughout my undergrad and PhD, and it was in the last year when I, I hit on this format of doing weekly vlogs yeah. and doing, like, a week in the life. And um, the channel really took off and yeah. this is a point I like to make uh, when I'm teaching about Psycom which is that it's not overnight success takes a really long time like it yeah. looked like the channel yeah, yeah, just exploded yeah. Yeah. that was my 211th video mm -hmm. that took off yeah. and 10 years before then um, so it was that format that really sort of meant that the channel was gaining subs quite quickly mm -hmm. and by the time I was sort of umming, umming and ahhing what should I do should I stay in academia or not I think I had about 50,000 subs and I thought I enjoy science and I enjoy do the, the doing research, but I don't enjoy academia. Mm -hmm. like, and my experience with academia during the PhD was not the best, and so I was like, this isn't for me. And I, I basically identified YouTube as like, well, I don't think this is going to work, but if I don't try, I'd regret not trying. Because uh -huh. there's, you know, at the end of the day, yeah. if you've got a, a physics degree from Oxford, if you've got a PhD, you're probably going to get a job. You, yes. you know, I had a very yeah, lucky yeah, yeah. position to be in. Yeah. And I figured, well, let's let's give it a go. So after submitting, I um, basically dedicated to trying to do a video a week and mm -hmm. just sort of muddled through. And I think it became sustainable about six months after that, mm -hmm. like six months of me... Um, making videos regularly and yeah. I was lucky in that I had some big hits early on with like yeah. the Star Wars Planets video that I did um, but it was it, it wasn't so much a like I think this is going to work moment it was like kind of let's try you're and... in a good position it sounds like you're in the right position in your life having just finished the PhD yeah did you sort of have like um, support elsewhere or savings or something that allowed you so I moved back in because I my... guess that's probably an issue for a lot of people right yeah. is Continuing to have an income to pay rent, and you know. So, so I had, I mean, I was generating, I don't know, it's probably about a thousand dollars a month from AdSense, and then I, okay. I also got lucky in that I um, signed with an agency then, right at the end. Right. Okay. Um. Uh. But it wasn't, I, I it wasn't earning enough to like cover rent and everything for, mm -hmm. like I say, a couple of months. Yeah. But I moved in with my parents because I knew I was moving in with my now wife, but yeah. she was finishing up her degree. Uh, which was doing a, a PGC at Cambridge. Yeah. And uh, we knew we were going to get a house together, but there was this runway of, right, I'm moving my parents, I have a couple of months where I've got very limited expenses. Yes. Let's build that up. So it was a very lucky set of circumstances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's luck and also um, committing to it, I guess. Mm. And like did make creating those circumstances where, yeah, I mean, there's the potential for something to pop off. Um, yeah. Which is like, I suppose... Like the biggest risk I've ever taken is doing that. Yeah, no, so no, I, I think that's fair. I think that's we can associate adventurous with taking risks. I mean, so the, I think that's fair. The yeah. other thing would be I've done some glacier ascents in Switzerland when I was an explorer scout, mm -hmm. which I guess is technically more, you know, of a uh, standard definition standard of adventure. Standard of adventure. <laughs> but, you know, YouTube's an adventure on its own. <laughs> Uh, okay, right. If I roll a six again, I'm flipping this, I'm flipping this well, 200 year old table. And, and I don't have a spare dice, so you're going to have to just. I'm sorry. Okay, fine. Four. We're all right. <laughs> it's still fun, though. So, okay, this is fine. Oh, I've got loads there. There you go. Take that one. Thank you. Okay. Ooh. What would be the title of your biography? Oh, Dr. Warhammer Puppy. Yeah, Dr. Warhammer Puppy. <laughs> Origins. Um, blimey, I don't know. Like, I... 
We don't need an okay. We don't need an exact title, but like, what kind of things do you think would be featured in it? You know. Mm. Well, I mean, like the, the the most influential biography that I've read, and and this is like foundational text for me, mm-hmm. was My Family and Other Animals by Gerald Durrell. Okay. Um, so the guy who founded Durrell, uh, and he, the the point of that was like his childhood and where he got this love of animals from. So I feel like I'd like to do something in that vein of this is why I ended up doing this thing. Um, although he had way more interesting stories than I could ever tell. Um, so there probably would also be, you know, YouTube stuff in there. Yeah. So I, maybe riffing off that title, like my YouTube subscribers and other animals or something nice. like that would be yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the other one that I've read and I, I was surprisingly interesting was Arnold Schwarzenegger's Biography. I've heard this from other people actually. It's actually so really it's, good. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, called yeah. Total Recall because obviously. It is. <laughs> so I feel like you know I, I don't think I have any iconic videos that I can <laughs> rip off of, but maybe that would be another option, like uh, a, a a life in the life of. <laughs> That's the title, and then we have it as like a YouTube thumbnail. <laughs> it's a whole new revolutionary format: a life in the life of. Cool. I, I think that's about as good as I can do on that one. No, no, that, that it's like if you had just like dropped a perfect title. I mean, <laughs> yeah, someone's gonna it's not going to happen. My literary agent needs to call me. Yeah, uh, <laughs> when I've had an interesting enough life. Oh, another maths one. Okay, let's try. How about this one? What is your favourite equation? And it can't be Navier Stokes because you said that earlier. I did already say Navier Stokes. <laughs> um. I've got... Uh, okay, I have one for physics and one for, for pure maths. Okay, this is this so, is more than I wanted, but yes. The, the pure maths one is a really obvious one. It's Euler's identity. Mm-hmm. But I, I have it tattooed here. Right. <laughs> so we won't... We, we, we won't, we won't flip it. Uh, Keep it PG. No nips on this one. But it's um, it's just beautiful. It's, yeah. it's, it's an incredible combination of all of these different constants. What version? Oh, e to the i pi plus one equals zero. Okay, good math. Correct, like, correct answer. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, minus that's signs better to are me. weird. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you get one and zero. Yeah. Right? And I don't feel like minus one is like that. Imp- I don't know. I like the one and the zero and then the e and the i and the pi because you have the five fundamental mathematical constants. Right. And and that's why it's be- it, it's it's the distillation yeah. of maths into one mm-hmm. equation, which I yeah. love. The physics version, I think the... God, now I'm down to my... There are so many great equations. Maxwell's equations are amazing in themselves. I just have those tattooed here. I'm going to say everything I say will probably see those be ones. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so these are... And, and, the, and being in um, differential the form rather than yes. integral form looks so much better. Agreed. Um, so they're beautiful as well. The one that I think a lot of people sleep on is the ideal gas equation. Mm, so, okay. So yeah, P yeah, equals yeah. rho RT. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the reason I like it is because it's like a babel fish. For the atmosphere. It's like, if you understand something about half of the system, you can then translate it into something about this other part of the system that you don't understand. Yeah. And to me, maths and, and science generally is kind of bad magic. It's taking something that you have knowledge of and mm-hmm. using that to obtain knowledge of something else. Yeah. That's absolutely magic. And so to have an equation that really distills that in my field that's like, sure, I know what the density of the atmosphere is in this field and I know what the temperature field is. This can tell me what the pressure is. Yeah. I think that's amazing. And it's yeah, a really yeah, yeah. neat little, little again, neat little distillation of atmospheric science. All so in one. P is pressure, rho is density. R is, R is your specific gas constant. So it's the gas constant per unit mass. Okay, so that will vary depending on the, the yeah, gas it, you're studying. I, I can tell you. The, known. Is that the idea? Yeah, and it depends whether it's dry air or wet air. Okay. Um, and then you have your, the temperature field. So you need to, as you were saying, so you need to measure either the density, the pressure, or the temperature. You need two of those three measured. Yeah. And then you know the other one. Yeah, in, okay. in, in a field configuration, which... Uh, it's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have heard of the ideal gas equation, but uh, I don't think I've ever thought of it in that context. So that's well, because nice normally you see it written as PV equals NRT. So it's the yes, pressure, the volume. volume, the number of moles, the, the um, molar gas constant and the temperature, which I think obfuscates it a bit. I mm. think that's a little less interesting. An honourable <laughs> mention would be the geostrophic flow equations. Which, nice. are, which, yeah. which are, are technically cheating because it's part of the Navier Stokes, but it's such a simplification. But the fact yeah. that all you yeah, do yeah, strip yeah. away absolutely everything and you're left with pressure gradient, Coriolis correction, and that is 90% of how the atmosphere flows. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. In agreement with that one. <laughs> right, let's see if we can get something not in the extremes. Let's go for a. 
something in the middle. Two. Okay, general. General questions. Right. Ooh. What is your dream job? My dream so, is to not have a job. <laughs> <laughs> so every time I've ever asked this question in this uh, my speed dating context to a fellow YouTuber, it has always been what I do now. Yeah. Which is a perfectly valid answer, but I'm going to say you're not allowed to do what you do now. Yeah, because that's the thing. Like this is, it's great. This is yeah, this yeah. is a, a secret that no YouTuber will tell you, but being a YouTuber is dope, <laughs> uh, and especially doing, and and, and do, I think you're you've got it great in that you're doing part time YouTube, part time academia. Mm -hmm. You know, like yeah. you, you've got best of both worlds, and it's something that I'd like to do actually, and maybe in the future I'd be able to do a little bit of research and a bit of research, a bit, a bit of YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, it is great, but I think. If, if you said I had to do a job and it wasn't just no job because that is the ideal, um, <laughs> I'd love to be a professional painter, a professional miniature painter. Okay, right. Because uh, I, I, I do this thing, and I think a lot of YouTubers do this, where they make, they chase their interests. They'll mm -hmm. have an interest, they'll make videos about it, and then they'll have another interest, and then their content will shift over time. So originally it was Oxford stuff, then it was yeah. um, PhD stuff, then it was sciencey stuff and book stuff and kind of what I do now. Um, a lot of what I watch is miniature painting. Right. So I have an ambition to win the, a, a prize that doesn't have to be first or anything in the, <laughs> in the national painting competition, Golden Demon, uh, by the end of this decade. And okay. it's a hobby that I really love doing. It's incredibly relaxing. And I feel like I'm okay enough at it that I could mm. maybe do, do it professionally or do videos about it. Uh, and yeah, I, it's probably a case of grass is always greener, but that's like in the back of my head of like, oh, I wish I was doing this. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you say, you could combine the painting with the YouTube. That could be the yeah, pivot so on the YouTube thing. If I get know? to the point where I don't have, it's, at the moment it feels like a mad dash to get a video done pretty much every week. Yeah. Um, it doesn't leave much time, but if I got to a point where I could relax and do mm. more passion projects, like I've, I've got a list of videos I'd like to make on my second channel mm -hmm. that are all about painting and I just need to find the time to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And when you say professional, so does that mean, say I was wanting to play Warhammer, but like, was like, I want these painted, but I don't enjoy that aspect of it. I don't have the time. Is that kind of like, I would yeah. seek out a professional painter. Yeah, there's there like, studios you... that you can commission okay. to do an entire army or it can wow. be a single model or a squad. Um, yeah, you get people who are into the competitive side, but just like, can you basic, do a basic paint job of these? Yeah. Uh, I don't want to do it. And yeah, you can't uh... buy them pre-painted? Not or from the shop, no. Not from the they're, shop, right. uh, This is quite funny, actually. So when I published, I published a book earlier this year, and uh, my wife got me a present to sort of celebrate it, mm -hmm. and she got me a Warhammer model that she was going to paint herself. <laughs> but when when she got home one day, she I just heard from downstairs like, oh, I have to build it. <laughs> <laughs> like she, like you know, it yeah, wasn't yeah, just yeah, come like... out of the box like this thing. And she's just like, oh god. <laughs> like, you have to like cut pieces off with like a little clipper and like uh, yeah yeah they... sand bits down and glue them wow. together and you know people who are really good at it also do sculpting of extra bits on top um and yeah like it's, it's a skill <laughs> it's a real skill yeah, and it's no, something that, that totally some people it, yeah. pay other people to do so i'm sure okay. i'd probably do it for like a month and hate it yeah <laughs> the ideal is there okay all right awesome and i didn't even know it was a job so i learned something <laughs> right three another general one Let's go to the bottom. Let's, let's get one of these d uh, uh, floor dwelling ones. What colour best describes your personality? <laughs> um, that's a really hard one, actually, because I I, I don't know. If this, this was something that like I everyone does in primary school, but it's like oh yeah, this colour means this. this yeah, 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 this. yeah, yeah. And like as a kid, I was like, well, I'm a bit of that, and I'm a bit of. <laughs> And I feel like parts of me are green. That's probably the overwhelming colour is like, okay. because it's very, again, it's very natural. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's also, it's, yeah. It's, but it's quite placid at the same time. Uh, it's, it's quite mellow. And I am mostly mellow, but then I have these bursts of excitability and also bursts of, I get very like angry with inanimate objects easily. <laughs> like I, I, I have a short temper when it comes to certain things. Like when things... I think it's the physicist in me. It's when things don't work the way I think they should work. It's like, yeah, just yeah, obey yeah, yeah. gravity, you little bitch. Like, why are you falling <laughs> off the table? Um, so, like, I don't think that's green. <laughs> like, I th so you'd have to add in a bit of red or a bit of yellow to it, I guess. So what's that? Purple? I guess? 
Yeah? I mean, well, that's red and blue, but I'm thinking if you add red to green, you also end up with a... Because green's blue and yellow, right? If I remember my art classes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. So, so then if you also put... Don't if you mix the three primary colours, red, blue and yellow, all together give you a brown? Yeah, so perhaps what I'm saying is my colour is brown. <laughs> Which, for people that think I was, you know, boring, there you go, you won. I hope you're happy. <laughs> bit of, no, I like the kind of bit of everything. You described it well. So that's why you've ended up I'm with brown. I'm poo coloured. This is, this is perfect. <laughs> right, I'm going to try, I'm going to hope for a better question. <laughs> Four. Okay, this is the, the fun Punch one. Up. Right. What's your best joke? My life. <laughs> That's a good joke. Uh, oh, what's uh, my best joke? Oh, a joke that comes to mind, I suppose. Is really the what joke, you and, say. and I hate that this is the thing that whenever I hear joke, this comes crashing into my brain's field of vision, <laughs> which is a joke that I heard when I was a kid. Uh, two peanuts are walking down the road. Mm -hmm. One was assaulted. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it that's it that, oh. I, I, I hate that that's the, what my default <laughs> is but that's the thing that immediately comes to mind yeah no I mean I mean I wasn't it wasn't too much of a fake laugh I genuinely oh, found good, that thanks. quite amusing <laughs> I was like preparing myself to like laugh whatever he says but no you know yeah. that, that was actually fairly amusing okay and I didn't and I hadn't heard it Okay, well there I we go. I haven't heard it, so I'm getting. I'm preparing to be a dad. I think I'm getting all <laughs> yes, these dad yes. jokes ready. <laughs> um, right, moving swiftly on. Oh, another maths one. There we go. Oh, is that more than one? No. Yeah, we're good. Okay, we kind of did this before, but other YouTube channels you watch? Oh, okay. Um, Tom Rock's maths. Obviously, uh, who I mean in the maths section, Papa Flammy, Flammable Maths, yes, it's fantastic. Free blue one brown. Yes. Um, there, there are certain channels, and this is going to sound really bad, but I mean this in the most loving way possible. There are certain channels that I hate watch because okay. I watch it and it's like this is so good. <laughs> why, why isn't my thing this good? Um, like I remember when I first watched Bill Wurtz's History of the Entire World. I guess right. I yeah, was at yeah, my yeah, desk yeah, yeah, in the yeah. PhD office yeah. and I. I watched it, finished, got up and walked out. I, I, I was like, <laughs> why am I bothering to make videos? This is so yeah, much better yeah, than yeah. anything I could ever make. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and like, so 3 Blue 1 Brown is a great example of that. Kurtz Kasach is another one in like the educational space where you're mm. just like, I could never do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah um, no, I, I'm with you on both of those for sure. Uh, so see, I watched a lot of them. Uh, I mean, who else educational wise do I watch? Um, I mean, I feel the thing is, there's just a, there's a landscape that all kind of, and it, I don't mean this in a negative sense, it all blurs into one. There are videos yeah. that pop up and you're like, oh, it's this person, like, you know, um, Astro Becky here in Oxford, for yes. example. Yes, like, yes, her videos yes. come kind of, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or, uh, gosh, who else does science? It's like Steve Mould, mm -hmm. or It's Okay to Be Smart, or, you know, Tom Scott. The, the yeah. whole, like, there's so many that they're all trying to get through the door at the same time. Like mm -hmm. Mr. Burns' immune system. Like, I, <laughs> and I can't even think of them. But yeah, the other people, like Red Letter Media is something they can instant watch, uh -huh. um, as, as is stuff from the Hat Films in particular. Uh, Casey Neistat, Van Neistat, Casey's got a brother who does really interesting videos. Uh, a wild card one that I really love and doesn't make enough videos is a guy called David Bull, who okay. does videos on Japanese woodblock printing. So like <laughs> the traditional yeah. method of making, so like the Great Wave, for example, uh -huh. how you carve wood blocks and then you cover them with ink and you press them and you do impression after impression. And I've just learned so much about this art form mm. that I was only tangentially aware of yeah. um, from his videos. And I think that's, that's the best part of YouTube is when you stumble across something that it, it's a rabbit hole that you look yeah. at and go, oh, what was down there? And then suddenly you're burrowing down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. I think we've all been there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, and normally all it takes is one video and mm -hmm. you're like, well, I, I'll go onto a channel and like add to watch later, yeah, yeah, add yeah, to yeah. watch later. Like, this has happened far too many times. <laughs> <laughs> I think, so for me, with you saying like things you never thought you would want to watch, mm. but, but you end up absolutely loving. Um, so obviously I like Pokemon, you know, Pokemon yep. tattoos, etc. That's not a secret. But I have this, um, I think his channel is called like Temp 6T or Temp 3T. I don't know quite how you pronounce it. Right. But it's just a guy who plays competitive Pokemon. And it's just him like playing with like a really, what looks like a really terrible team. 
against people who have like legendary spammers. Oh, I've seen he calls this. Them. Yeah, and it's yeah. just like you know because you have this chat. Like, they're they're all like, "Oh, you're too terrible," and obviously he wins because he knows what he's doing. Yeah, and it's just, he uses type just, affecting moves uh, and like state affecting even. Literally, I'll sit and watch it, and then hours pass, and I'm like, "Did I really just watch some guy like move come over an hour?" Like, yeah. I mean, the, the other just... one that I've fallen victim to a lot is, is a channel called Retox44 that does uh, ASMR videos. But that what mm. they are is interviews with people that have relaxing voices. So I'll, I'll whack these on quite frequently yeah. just before I go to bed to try and relax. But you end up learning about the weirdest things. Like, <laughs> uh, I've watched a video about a guy who wrote a book on conspiracies through history. And I was, like, gripped. It was yeah. so interesting. Or um, there's a blacksmith who's talking about different kinds of iron and how the carbon content affects it. And it's just like, <laughs> I'm, like, falling asleep, but I'm also learning at the same time. That um, sounds ideal, actually. That's a yeah. really good concept. Yeah, hi comes highly recommended. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Should we go again? Yeah. Three. Uh, general, again. general. You've successfully now avoided the extremes after saying you wanted to avoid yes, the extremes. I like this. It's, uh... it's almost like you sort of say what you want and then the dice doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> Exploring or lazing on the beach? I. Right. There, there's a time and a place for both. Yeah. I am predominantly. And an explorer with extreme social anxiety. So often when I go to, because I, I film all, all over and I yep. get to go to really interesting places, but unless I have a purpose somewhere, what I find myself doing is just walking around the streets and never mm. actually going into anything. I never go into an attraction because the idea of like, have I got to talk to someone? And, like, yeah. you know, what, and especially <laughs> if you're in another country, like I feel so guilty about speaking English. Yeah. Yeah, I speak yeah, a little yeah. bit of French and a little bit of Spanish, mm. but like, I would just feel so awful if I went in and I couldn't communicate with someone. Yeah. So I really, like, I explore, but in my own way. Yeah. Uh, and, and go for walks and things. Having said that, I went on a honeymoon recently, and the best part of the whole honeymoon was that we did um, just over a week of us going through France on the train and going into Spain. Mm. And it was like a day here, a day here, and it was full on, like, exploring all yeah. these places. The best part of it was when we got to Barcelona and we spent a day by the pool. Right. <laughs> and I was just yeah. like, why did we do this the whole time? <laughs> this is so much more relaxing. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's, there are very few things better. Like, my favourite holiday I ever took was with friends. We went to this, like, sh um, villa in France mm. where uh, we were in the middle of nowhere in Cognac and there was a pool and like a farmhouse and all we did was sit by the pool and read for like a week and then maybe drink and eat cheese in the evening yeah, yeah. Uh, and that was great but like my default is definitely get out there see things yes and yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not quite suck the marrow out of life but it's like you know <laughs> you're only here for a limited time let's try and make the most yeah. of it yeah no I'm with you like time and place for both but I think I would also be on the explore if I had to do one yeah it's got to be exploring it's got to yeah. be exploring although like it's, it depends how long I've been working if I've been working for like a few <laughs> I've had a very intense few weeks after your like, current what you're describing to me is your current travelling around everywhere period you're in I could really go for like a, a few a days week by on the, the pool. beach yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right okay right. Uh, four fun fun Ooh. Would you rather be forgotten or remembered for all the wrong reasons? Oh, good grief. <laughs> um, this okay. could be in the danger part, I think. I feel like this that is, is a danger quiet. part, yeah. I think there is a comfort, a comfort to knowing that the earth is going to be swallowed by the sun one day. Yeah. And that even people that you think of as being immortal now, like Newton or Aristotle or whoever, yes. everyone is going to be forgotten. So knowing that that is an inevitability and there is no way to carve your initials on the universe means that like it's gonna happen at some point. Like I wouldn't I wouldn't want to grip onto immortality because it mm. isn't immor immortality. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's just like a, a shadowy afterlife. So mm. yeah, I'd I'd be very much okay with being forgotten because that's the destiny the universe has for me. Interesting, and I feel like. A follow-up point to that then is, so you don't believe we'll ever like escape our solar system? Uh, no, I think I right? think Cause... humans might, but the the practicalities of faster than you know communication at subluminal yeah. speeds just means that it's going to be impossible to realistically have an interstellar civilization. Yeah. Mm. I think we will leave our solar system, but uh, and you know some species version of us will probably survive if we can get our act together in the next couple of decades and not burn to a crisp now. Yes. Um, but I, I just, I think that 
even then, eventually people will settle in far flung bits of the galaxy and they're not going to know who Einstein was. They're not going to certainly not going to know who I was. Yeah. So yeah, I, yeah, I don't see a point to thirsting after trying to become immortal. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. That was a bit yeah. of a downer. Should we try and finish yeah. on a happier one? <laughs> yes. Say, oh no. Danger. Danger. Perfect. Okay. Perfect, Perfect one to end on. Okay. Let's go for that. Oh, sorry. I've got two. There we go. All right. Last one. And it's a good one. Uh -huh. What was your most embarrassing moment that you're willing to share with the with the YouTube? Okay. Yeah. Sure. So I actually mentioned uh, already AGU, it's the conference that happens in San Francisco, uh, and this is the premier event for everybody coming together. So I um as put this was second year of the PhD. I had a poster. Mm -hmm. So for people that don't know academic conferences, you either give a talk or you have a poster that's basically outlining. This is the field I'm in. This is what I'm doing. This is some results. Yep. Um, but I was early on, so it was preliminary. This is, this is the problem I'm working on. Uh, and this woman uh, came up to me and was sort of asking some questions. She was pretty hard-nosed about it. She uh -huh. was like, yeah. so where do you define this area? And I was like, well, you know, ballpark. It's about 60 degrees north. And she was like, no, no ballpark, young man. Like, where is this? <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. It's pretty intense. Um, and she asked some questions that obviously indicated she knew a bit about the subject area. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you know, do you work in the stratosphere, which was my area? And she sort of gave me a smile and was like, yeah, I dabbled. And then walked off. And uh, the name on her badge, I was like, I swear I recognise that name. So I Googled it. Anyway, she was Susan Solomon, uh, and she was one of Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People at one point. <laughs> she was one of the people that discovered the mechanism for the hole in the ozone layer in the stratosphere. Uh, Amazing. And, and you were like, did you work in this? <laughs> you know, like saying to Einstein, have you, have you done any physics? Yeah. Like, oh, God, that was mortifying in retrospect. <laughs> at least you realise afterwards, though. I almost yes. feel like if you'd asked that question and then she told you just how much she had and then you were like, oh shit, oh shit, you know? I yeah. don't know. I, I like it's better to realise after the fact almost. The thing is, I'm trying to atone for it after the fact yeah. as well, but in my videos, I'll, whenever I get a chance to mention her, it's like, the great atmospheric <laughs> scientist, Susan Solomon. Um, I should probably do a whole video about her, really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, not, not embarrassing in the moment, but mortifying afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well... I think that's a great point to end. You've been a great <laughs> sport. Embarrassment. Well, yeah, no, you, I think you're a great sport in showing that. You've definitely been a great sport throughout. Well, so. it's been a pleasure doing this. This has been really fun. Yeah, we, no. we, we were saying between takes that like we could kind of keep doing this forever. This is quite addictive. Yes, <laughs> it really is. <laughs> so, so thank you for inviting me and having me. No, you're very welcome. And thank you as always to all of you for watching the video. Do go and check out Simon's channel, which is Simon Ox Physics. Oh, Ox for Fizz. Yeah. O X F P H Y S. I I came up with the channel. I uh, like in the Oxford Computing Services. That's where I signed up for YouTube. <laughs> okay. And I was like, I need a username. Like, I'm I'm at Oxford and I'm doing physics. Yeah, this will never get old. I'm going to be here forever. <laughs> Sorry. We will obviously link it in the description. Yeah, so. it's just, just to help, but yeah. Um, so yeah, so go and check out what Simon does. Um, also do subscribe to my channel if you've enjoyed what you've been watching. There's a button. It's um, down here somewhere. Yes. Or if you're on mobile, it might be up here. I'm not sure. Anyway. <laughs> they change it all the time. They do. Um, yeah, so thank you so much. Thank you, Simon. Um, and I'll see you all soon.